Hey everybody, this is Bo the Mechanic for another exciting video. Today's project is hydraulics. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how to take apart a Parker Torque Series hydraulic wheel motor. They use these things in a lot of equipment, uh, like dingoes, uh, mini loaders, some excavators, rubber wheel excavators. I'm gonna take a look at this thing real quick. A lot of Bobcats use these things too. This specific model, like I said, is a Parker Torque, Torque Flight Series, I think. Torque Series. That's what they look like. It's a TG06, whatever. Basically, these things are kind of scary to some people. I'll show you how they go together. Nothing real complex inside there. It's just a hydraulic motor. And, uh, you know, basically what's wrong with this one is the, the front bearing is worn out and it's letting fluid, the seal inside here is blown, so now hydraulic fluid's coming through this way and getting on the tracks. As you can see, I think you guys can see that. I'm wiggling this shaft up and down. You shouldn't be able to move it at all. See that? There should be no movement there at all. When you get movement there, you know, basically it's going to blow the ring, the blow the pressurized ring inside this unit right here. As far as this side goes, uh, this part, you know, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's not leaking, but unfortunately, I got to take it all apart just to get to the, the bearing inside here. So you're going to have to order a, a seal kit to do this, a Parker seal kit, and I don't even know. Maybe I've got one over here. I don't even know. I ordered another one, but I might have the remnants of another kit. Here you go. This is for those Torque, Torque Flight Series motors. There you go. It's a S. K zero 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 nine two. But anyway, so here we go. Let me take the show you guys how this goes. Before we do it, actually, let me show you. You know, this thing needs to be orientated the same way. So you need to scribe some type of line or with paint or grind or whatever you want to do to keep all these parts in line. There's a bunch of discs in here and there's a commutator ring back here. And basically how it works is hydraulic fluid is shot under pressure inside here. It spins some gears, which in turn spins this shaft and rotates your motor. That commutator rings in the back and I'll show you kind of what it does too. It just kind of channels the fluid and makes the fluid go one way or the other to give you pressure. You know, this is what it came off of. Uh, this is like a 2004 Boxer 526DX mini loader. It's got a grapple on the front of it. This is for grabbing trees, grabbing all types of crazy shit, picking it up, picking, picking it up and dragging it. So I mean, it weighs about 4,000 pounds. And uh, I've done this a, a bunch of times, but you just stand here on the back of this machine. It's got levers. I'll show you how to use it when I get it put back together. These two raise and lower the boom. These two move the tracks independently. This opens the grapple. These things are really awesome. The Boxer makes a really nice one. This, this one is one of the, the Ferrari. This is like a Cadillac of uh, mini loaders. Real stable. The tracks actually uh, can expand and contract. And this is one of the heavier duty ones. It's got a three cylinder Perkins diesel engine in it. She'll pick up some heavy stuff, man, just with that grapple. But all right, anyway, I'm going to show you guys how to do it now. I'm going to scribe a line here real quick. I'll show you that in just a second. So there you go. I just scribed a line. I used a grinder. I just took my angle, a little, little ziz wheel that I got, and I, I zizzed a line. This is going to keep everything orientated because once you guys see when I take it apart, you, you don't want the pieces going together 90 out or 100 degrees out or whatever. So this is going to keep everything orientated. orientated. The fittings and shit can just stay on there. Uh, the back here, I just took a screwdriver and I ran it around to get the mud and crap out of here. But this is basically a 9 16 bolt, and they're torqued down to like 55 foot-pounds, so they're on there pretty damn snug. So you're going to have to use an impact or something like that to get them off. You could get them off otherwise, too. I mean, you just have to like stand on it or have somebody stand on it while you crank on the bolts, because 55 pounds, 65 pounds, I think they are. They're, they're pretty on there. They're running pretty good. So I'm going to impact them off here real quick. Okay, so here we are. Uh, all I did was set this thing on a... Uh, this is just a piece of pipe that I, I made, I cut it, just chopped it with a chop saw just to hold it. And as you can see, hydraulic fluid's going everywhere because I took all the pressure off those bolts, man. It's this cap's ready to come right off. You know, so I just made this. It's easier for me to work on it, but you can see the shaft's just still down in there in the bolt. I just stood it straight up and down. Still got my lines. So you just yank all these bolts free. Shows you how these things go back together. It's pretty fun. Okay, take the first cap off, bang. You wanna make sure you get out, keep all these in order too because when you get them out of order, they don't work. Now your commutator ring is right inside here on the other side of this thing. See that? 
That's your commutator ring. It's actually a little tiny piece of nylon right in there. It's called a commutator seal, commutator ring, and it's, it's hanging out. And this is what it looks like from the inside. This is what I was talking about. All these plates can get uh, out of alignment. That's why you see you could rotate this a crazy degree and then, you know, it's kind of off. And, you know, there's different ways to line it up. Obviously, it'll line up like, like that. And that's the way the bolts will go through. But it could also line up like this. You, you don't really want this to get all out of wax. That's why I, 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 I instructed you guys to cut a line in them or, or paint or whatever you guys want to do. So I just keep them in, in order and flip them upside down. Now, if you guys were just doing a seal kit, all you'd have to do to do a seal kit is just take out the commutator prep like this. This is just a seal kit. When you open this thing up, I've already pirated some parts out of this, but basically what you get is these new rings. You get these rings is just right here. And this is 90% of the time what goes wrong with these things. They'll just start leaking from the actual, the, uh, the actual body itself here. Somewhere right in here will just start weeping because there's so many damn seals in there. Eventually one of them just starts to wear out. This thing holds 2,000 PSI of hydraulic fluid constantly. So eventually it's going to leak. But anyway, so this is what you get. You get these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven maybe seals. They all fit inside there. And then you just, uh, you just dig them out with a screwdriver and put another one in and then just put it all back together. And you can see there's quite a few of them. Here's the next one. And now you're down to your pump body. This is what I was talking about. See, one of those seals just came free right here. These are the seals that you would replace. You know, and they just sit in grooves and get pressed in. This is the fun part, these, these damn pistons. It's an axial pump, so the gear just moves. And as it, this would be a low pressure side when it's sucking fluid in, and then right here would be compressing it. As you can see, the fluid comes in. Fluid really can't get compressed, so it just gets super pressurized. And it goes like that. So, when I pull this up, it's all going to come apart. See that? These are individual... Ah! These are individual pieces, and they sit in there just like that. So, we'll take them all out. And they're fun to try and get back together, but they do go back together. As you guys can see, when it came apart, that's how they go back together. Oh, unfortunately, I gotta take all this stuff apart to get to what I want. Oh, I might just take this one off too. Uh, I'm not too worried about it now because I, I obviously notated where everything goes back together. So, granted, they're not all in the perfect position right now on the table over here, but I'm not that worried about it. And as you can see, this thing just wobbles around in there like that. And while it does that, it spins. It's spinning. It's spinning the hydraulic cylinder, the inner cylinder. Oh, so one last one. Now that thing would go in there like that. The tolerance is really tight too, as you can see. It doesn't want to really just go back together. You have to shove them back together. Real tight tolerances. And there's your your. Your shaft. This is a shaft that runs through the whole damn thing. So we'd go in there like that. This is called a thrust washer. This is really important, okay? Make sure you guys don't damage this or lose it. The thrust washer has to be in there as well. The thrust washer keeps this bearing from backing out and getting into the pump pump body assembly. So that's kind of how it sits in there. And this right here is your actual one of your bearings. This is the needle bearing that sits right in here, and then there's another bearing set on the other side of this, and this is what I wanted to get to. I'm gonna have to take this whole thing out, beat it out to get to my other bearing, my heavy duty bearing, which is right in there. You see the shaft just slid right out almost. Let's see here. Just set that thing there. Let's see if this thing will even come out. Oh, yeah, she will. That's how warm she is. Sometimes you got to beat this thing out. So anyway, now I'm going to take this nut off, slide this whole whole drive shaft, shaft out. As was expected, look at this. I just pulled the shaft out, man, and the, the whole thing's destroyed. You guys can see in there, all these bearings just fell out. That's not what you want. This whole area here should be covered in grease. It should be packed with grease. 
And so what's happened is you can see it's actually, I think it's destroyed the shaft. I don't even think I can fix this anymore. You can see the shaft has actually been run on those bearings with no grease and just it's etched, it's etched itself into it. So, so I don't really know what I'm gonna do here. I, I guess I gotta get on the phone and, and look around, but you can see the, the race is there. Everything's just destroyed, man. It, it, it ate these things to fucking pieces, as you can see. Those things are supposed to be perfect circles, and it's just destroyed them. So, this wheel motor, if I can find another shaft, that's awesome, and if I can't find another shaft, I don't know. I'll have to see. Maybe I can get a bearing and the race will slide still on there, but I doubt it. So, anyway, at least you've seen one taken apart, and if I uh, can find a shaft, I'll put it back together.